I want to talk today about why I chose not to use Firebase for my new app, Roads. When first developing this app, I actually did start using Firebase and I set up authentication, was using Firestore, and then I also set up cloud storage. I have used Firebase quite a bit. I definitely like Firebase. If you follow the channel, you know I've made some videos about using Firebase and Flutter. And a couple of the best things about Firebase are it's super easy to set up, especially with Flutter. It's very easy to use. There's a lot of actual documentation around Firebase and Flutter. Right out of the box, you get a real-time database, which is amazing. You just set up Firebase, you can start streaming data, and you get those real-time updates. That is all awesome with Firebase. Uh, additionally, authentication is super easy with Firebase off. If you do want to learn more about Firebase and using it with Flutter, then I would 100% highly recommend Andrea's course, Flutter and Firebase Masterclass. But now let me move on to the reasons I actually chose not to use Firebase. So there's two main reasons, and ultimately they both come down to pricing, but the first reason is cloud storage. So so if you're not familiar, cloud storage is simply a file storage system that you can use, which is in the cloud. So if you have an app such as mine, where you're going to be storing a lot of files, in my case, I'll be storing audio files for roads, and I'll be needing to stream those files to have the user listen to the audio. So if we look at the pricing here for cloud storage, you can see you get five gigabytes stored, which is good, and then it's just two cents per gigabyte after that. That's really not the issue for me. The main thing I'm focused on or worried about is the download amount. So you can see here, gigabytes downloaded, you get one gigabyte per day, and then any gigabyte you go over that is going to be 12 cents per gigabyte. So download is going to be like the streaming. So if someone uploads a file that's let's say 50 megabytes, if someone else goes and listens to that, that's going to tap into this gigabytes downloaded. And in the case of 50 megabyte audio files, which I think is actually kind of large, you would get like 20 listens per day, and then you have to start paying 12 cents per 20 listens. So I did look at a couple alternatives and um, I decided to use Amazon S3, which is a similar cloud storage where you can just store your data and you get a URL and then you can use that URL in your app. The pricing doesn't line up exactly, but essentially you get 100 gigabytes of transfer per month. So what transfer means is upload and download. So let's say my app was using 50-50, although I think the upload will be significantly less than the download. Just for simple math here, let's say I then have 50 gigabytes of download from Amazon per month. That's about 50% more of a free tier than cloud storage. Cloud storage essentially is giving you 30 gigabytes per month for free, one per day though. On top of that, instead of paying 12 cents per additional gigabyte, with Amazon S3, you only pay nine cents per additional gigabyte. So even if the free tier was the same, which it's not, the S3 price per gigabyte is significantly cheaper than the Firebase cloud storage price per gigabyte. If your app is dealing with a lot of stored data and transferring of data, any audio or video streaming apps, then this is definitely something you really need to look at because the free tier and pricing for Firebase cloud storage is actually pretty expensive compared to other options. That being said, I could still use Amazon S3, or you could as well, with Firebase and Firestore, because Firestore is separate than your media storage. But ultimately, I ran into the issue of structuring my data in a way that worked well with a non-SQL database. So as you probably know, Firestore is a non-relational database. It's basically documents and a bunch of different documents and collections within those documents. The way their pricing structure works is they charge you per read and per write of document. So this is something to consider when you're structuring your Firestore database. The difference between a relational database and a non-relational database ultimately comes down to how you can store those relationships. So let me give you an example of one type of relationship that the Rhodes app has and how that needs to be structured if I use Firestore versus how it can be structured if I'm using a relational database like Postgres. In Rhodes, there is a concept of a channel and a channel can have episodes. The episodes then can also have comments and all three of those items, a channel, an episode, and a comment, all has an owner. An owner is just a user object. In Firestore, we would create the channel document and then we would reference the user in one of two ways. Either we're going to reference the user by their ID, so 
we'll just put the owner ID as the user ID on that channel. And now when we go get that channel, we can, we would make one call to get the channel and then we make an additional call to get that user based on their user ID. So already that's two document reads, which that's not a huge deal. Um, but as you can see, if that channel has 10 episodes, then we have to go get all 10 of those episodes. So that's 10 more reads. And then we also might need to go get all the owners of those episodes if we want to put who the episode is by. So that is going to increase the amount of reads, of course, because every type of nested object is going to have to be called from the document that is referencing it. That's one way to structure it. Another way, of course, is to store some of the data, essentially copying some of the data onto the document itself. So let's say on the episode, for example, you just want to put the name of the user who is the owner of the episode. You can add an additional field on the episode and it could be owner name, and then you can copy that owner name. The issue with this is now if the owner changes their name, so let's say you go and edit your name, how it's being displayed in the app, it's going to need to go and find the name on all those documents and update them, or the data will just be outdated. The relational database, however, is kind of more straightforward. You can just have all of those objects and they can relate to the actual object. And even further, you can make one query that does all of that. All that being said, I do want to say there is probably ways to make Firebase work and have those reads be limited. However, I also have more experience with relational databases. So part of me was coming to this problem and kind of getting a bit frustrated about it and just being like, I just need to go use a relational database versus trying to force this all into working here and figuring out how to make this work when I already know how to do this with a relational database. So that was also a good portion of my decision as well. I still do use Firebase for analytics, which is super easy to set up. And then I use it for cloud messaging, which is notifications. And then I also use it for deep links. I'm just not using cloud storage and Firestore. So now you're probably wondering what I'm using in place of Firebase. And I am using a Django backend using the Django REST framework. Django REST framework allows you to build an API. All that really means is you can use your database and then you have your API, which is communicating to your database and then your app can communicate to your API. Django is pretty easy to set up. I didn't have a ton of experience with it before, although I have used it slightly in the past. Never used Django REST framework, but their documentation is pretty good and I was able to get up and running on it pretty quickly. And then as I said before, I'm using AWS S3 for all of the storage of the audio and images. With a custom backend, you also have to host it yourself. So initially I tried hosting this on DigitalOcean and configuring it myself with just a DigitalOcean server, which is like $6 a month. And ultimately that became very difficult to set up. Then I tried to set it up on DigitalOcean with their app platform, which lets you deploy apps and have add-ons. It's very similar to like Heroku if you've ever used that. And that I got up and running and it was working, but it was about $40 a month. So a bit more expensive than I wanted to pay for just the server. And that was like the very smallest type of server for that as well. So as that scaled, that would just get more expensive. Then I came across AppLinku, which is a way to deploy your Django app on a server that you own yourself. So in this case, I can have that DigitalOcean server, which is $6 and then use AppLinku to basically configure everything just from my GitHub repository, and it will deploy to my own server. I'd highly recommend that. AppLinku is about $10 a month. If you get the yearly plan, it's like $100 for the year. And then DigitalOcean is $6 a month. So altogether, my hosting fees are $16 a month, which is more than Firebase at this point. Initial phases, Firebase is free. But as the app scales, and I plan for this app to scale, then it will become cheaper over time. Time. If you want to use AppLinko, I have a link down below and it is an affiliate link, so I will get a small commission from it. So if you'd like to support the channel and also use this fantastic product that is going to save you a ton of time, then definitely go and check out AppLinko for your next Django deploy. Speaking of Django, if you are interested in learning how to build a Django backend for a Flutter app, I'm planning to make some videos about that exact process. If you're interested in that, then subscribe to the channel, but I will say, I am fully focused right now on building the Rhodes app and making that better. So I won't be working on those videos in the immediate future, but I definitely at some point plan to release those.